This lesson is over constant proportionality. So Lucy loves to bake. After 180 minutes, she baked another 75 Valentine's muffins. If she baked at the same rate, that means the same steady rate, what is her constant rate of change for muffins per hour? So let's see. Well, 180 minutes is the same as saying three hours. So she baked another 75 muffins. So the 75 muffins in three hours. I would like to find the rate of change of muffins per hour, each hour. So I need to divide by three. So it's 25 muffins per hour. That's her rate of change. Because her so she's baking 25 muffins every hour at a steady rate, constant rate. So the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department monitors the number of largemouth bass in lakes across the state. The department has to ensure that the population is constant in the state's lake. At Lake Fort, a biologist estimates there are 490,752 largemouth bass in 27,264 square acres of lake. At Lake Ray Roberts, that's a tongue twister, there are an estimated 460,800 largemouth bass in 25,600 square acres of lake. Um, there are 24,120 largemouth bass in 1,340 square acres of Lake Sulphur Springs. As you can tell, this is a very small lake. Are the number of largemouth bass constant in the different lakes? Complete the table. So we just completed a table. So using a calculator, determine the unit rate of number of bass per square acre of each lake. Let's start with the first one. So 490,752 divided by 27,264. I need to break that down to one square acre. Wait, let me go. Find, determine the unit rate of number of bass per square acre. Per square acre means one, so I need to break it down to one. So I need to divide 490,752 divided by, oops, divide right here, by 27,264 equal 18. So there are 18 so far I got, so in the first lake, there are 18 bass for every one square acre of lake. That is the uh, Lake Fork. What about Lake Ray Roberts? 460,800 bass. The square acres is 25,600. I need to break it down into one square acre. So let's, oops, let me clear this. Um, let's type it in, 460,800 divided by 25,600. Oh, hey, that's constant. 18, whoops, oh goodness, it's 18 again. So in the second lake, there are 18 bass for one square acre. What about the sulfur springs? 24,120 bass in a square acre of 1,340. I need to break it down into one uh, square acre. So let's clear it. So that's 24,120 divided by 1340. Hey, it's also 18. So 18 bass for one square acre. So we determine the unit rate. Does the relationship between the number of large bass and the number of square acres in the lakes represent a constant rate of change? Yes, it does. Look at this. It's all the same. So for every square acre is 18 bass. It's a steady rate. So they did a good job in populating the lakes with the same number of bass for every square acre. The constant rate constant of proportionality, which we are learning today, and its relationship to the unit rate will always be the same. So the constant of proportionality can be represented by the equation k equal yx. 
So in this table, this is the x, this is the y. So you write it as a ratio of k equal y over x, so y over x. And then you'll come up with a number, which is the unit rate or the concept proportionality. So um, you do not need to memorize the word concept proportionality. On the seventh grade mathematics charts next year, um, for pre-APs this year, you will see the formula k equal y over x. So you just plug and chug, plug in the y and plug in the x, and then you'll be able to come up with a number to find the constant of proportionality. So constant proportionality is like unit rate, the ratio between y and x. So here is a video of dogs. Not to be mean, I guess I'm not a pet owner. Doesn't it realize it's looking at its own image? Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know anything about pets. The dog incessantly, as you can tell, incessantly mean continually bark, bark, bark 30 times in five minutes. Relate the number of barks to the number of minutes. 30 times in five minutes. This is like unit, in other words, find a unit rate. So it'll be divide by five, divide by five. So it's six sparks every minute. So in other words, we just found the constant proportionality of six. So Cha yelps 20 times in two hours. Ray Rao yelps 30 times in three hours. And we write it as finding the unit rate of 20 yelps per two hours or 10, uh, 10 yelps per hour the constant proportionality is 10 because constant proportionality is k equal y over x is where you simplify it and you're finding what number you are multiplying by for every hour. So with the, with, by knowing the constant proportionality, you're knowing what number you're multiplying by. For example, if I give you seven hours, if I multiply it by the constant proportionality of 10, I know it'll be seven. If I said uh, these do a dog barked eight hours times 10, it'd be 80 barks. So going back to our fish example, the concept of proportionality is 18. That means if I multiply by the square acres, any square acre by 18, I will know how many fish there are. So Mr. Rao's truck can travel about 40 miles on two gallons of gas. Make a table and a graph. Whoops. And to show the distance travel after one, two, three, four, and five gallons of gas. Well, it's 40 miles and two gallons of gas, so it'll be 20 miles and one gallon. 60 will be 3, 80 will be 4, 100 will be 5. So let's graph this. One gallon gas, I can go 20. Two gallon could go 40. Three can be go 60. Four could be 80. And five could go 20. I would, oh, connect it or not. You would connect this. The reason why you would connect it is because. Uh, when you're driving a truck, you don't drive every one gallon. You can drive half a, using half a gallon. So using the formula k equal y over x to find a concept proportionality. So it'll be 20 over 1 or 20. You could say 40 over 2 or 20. Uh, 60 over 3 equals 20. So the concept proportionality is 20. That means if I multiply any number of gas by 20, I would know how many miles I drove. So our last thing is you're going to be doing an experiment to figure out concept proportionality on your own. You're going to be given these thing called rainbow cubes, and you're going to stack one of them and measure the centimeter. It's two centimeters long. Then you're going to stack two blocks. It'll be four. Three blocks will be six. Four blocks, 
the measurement will be 8, 5 blocks will be 10. And then you're going to graph your data. So uh, this will be the number of blocks. And this will be the height. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So I'm going to grab the data. So one block has a height of 2. Two blocks has a height of 4. Three blocks have a height of 6. Four has a height of 8. Five have a height of 10. Six would be 12. Seven would be 14. So determine, so find a ratio of height to number of blocks. In other words, you're going to use the formula k equal yx to find the concept proportionality. So if I look at the table, it's 1, 2, 2, 4. So 2, 4 would be 4 over 2 equals 2. So the ratio is for every, there are two inches, two centimeters for every block. That's the ratio of height to number of blocks. So there's two centimeters for one block. And so the concept proportionality is just two. Um, because if I take, for example, this example, seven comma fourteen, find the concept proportionality is 14 over 7 is 2. So the, I mean, it is, if I multiply any number of blocks by 2, I will know its height. Next one. So if I have five counters and I measure its height, it would be 1. If I measure, one centimeter, if I measure, if I have 10 counters and I stack them together, it would be 2. 20 of them would be 4. 25 of them would be 5, and 30 would be 6. So I will graph this. This represents the number of counters, and this is the height requirement. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11. Well, actually, you know what? Algebra countering went up to 30, so our graph is not long enough. So how can I graph this? I'm going to graph this by 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 12, 14, 16, 28. Oh, yeah, I'm going to count by 2. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30. So our height, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So if I have five algebra, five counters, it would have a height of 1 right there. If I had 10, it would have a height of 2 right there. 20 would be a height of 4. 25 would be 5, and then 30 would be 6. So, as you can tell, it's steady right here. So what is the ratio of height to number of uh, red yellow counters? So there is a height of 6, and... And there's uh, 30 counters. So if I simplify this, but divide by 30, divide by 30, that'd be 1. 6 divided by 30, and 30 going 6, no. And x is put a point 0. Can 30 go 60? Point 2. So there is 0. 0.2 centimeters for every counter. So that means if I that means I know that no matter how many counters I have, if I multiply by 0.2, I can find its 
height. So what is the constant proportionality? K equal, let's see, it's 6 comma 30. No, I'm sorry, it's 30 comma 6. So this is x, this is y, so 6 and 30. If I divide by 30, divide by 30, it is 0.2 or 0.2. That is a constant proportionality, 0.2. So what is, so again, constant, uh, so what constant proportionality is like unit rate. It's finding and breaking it down into one unit. By knowing that unit rate, you really are finding constant proportionality. You can multiply that unit rate or constant proportionality by any number in order to find the, another relationship between another number. For example, um, like for example, Mr. Rao's car, uh, the constant proportionality is 20 or the unit rate is 20. That means I can go 20 miles for every gallon of gas. So I can multiply 20 by any number of gas and I can find the number of miles driven.